Welcome scholars. This video is on the concentration of solutions. And we're going to start off with a few definitions for a few different types of concentrations. And the main unit that we use for concentration is called molarity. And when we say it, we call that solution, we say that it is some value molar in terms of concentration. And it's symbolized simply with a capital M. The definition of molarity is the moles of solute over liters of solution. So we're counting the whole solution here. We're looking at the whole volume of solution. We're not just looking at the amount of water that goes in or alcohol or oil that goes into the solution. We're looking at the whole volume under the whatever conditions we're looking at where we're interested in the concentration of the solution. Remember the solute is the thing that dissolves into the solvent to make the solution. And that for things that have similar intermolecular forces, you could get to high concentrations because those solutes would be very, or would be more soluble in that solvent. And so for things like molarity in terms of concentrations, you might say something was one molar in concentration. Well, how are you gonna get a one molar solution? Well, you could have one mole per liter. That would give you a one molar solution. You could have two moles in two liters. You could have a half of a mole in a half of a liter. All of those would give you a one molar solution. If the moles of solute increases to have the same concentration, the volume, the liters of solution also have to increase. If, however, the volume was constant and you had something always over, let's say, one liter, then whatever the moles would be on the top of that one liter would be the same as the molarity. If you have two moles here per liter, that would give you a two molar solution. If you have a half of a mole here in one liter, that would be a half molar solution. This molarity, this is the concentration we wanna use for chemical reactions with the mole map. This molarity is what we will use for dilutions of solutions. So if you have a original solution or your first solution of some volume and all you do is you take some volume of that first solution. Sometimes people might call this the stock. So you've got a very concentrated bottle of solution in the lab that you wanna take from. You have some concentration of that stock. You take some small volume of that stock and if you dilute it up to a larger volume, then the concentration after that dilution is going to be lower. And you could use this equation, also sometimes called the dilution equation, to calculate those concentrations. We wanna stick with this with molarity it would technically usually still be possible to use it with other types of concentration, but it's always going to, going to be true with molarity. And molarity, as I said, is also the SI unit of concentration. So when in doubt, if just something just asks you for the concentration of a solution, you want to put it into molarity. As an example, let's say that we have one mole of some sort of a compound. In this case, C5H8O4. And we put this one mole of compound 
into 150 milliliters of solution. In other words, we put that into some water and we add enough water after all of that compound is dissolved and we measure it and we have exactly 150 milliliters of solution. For us to put this in the molarity, this volume has to be liters. So even though milliliters may be easier to measure in the lab, the definition is based off of liters. And so we would convert our milliliters to liters. And this would give us our concentration here of 6.667 molar C5H8O4 is how we would write that out. If we took 10 milliliters of this solution, and we diluted that up to 250 milliliters, then we could use this dilution equation to solve for the concentration of the solution after dilution. And you should see how that would be possible just by cross multiplying and um, isolating the M2. And my M2 then is 0 0.2667. I'm not worrying about significant figures for this. So this is our SI definition for concentration, moles of solute per liters of solution. This is the concentration we wanna stick with when we're thinking about chemical reactions. And this is the concentration that will always be useful whenever we're trying to do things with dilutions. Now I mentioned that this is gonna be true at specific uh, conditions. What conditions could you change that might change the concentration of solution without actually changing what's in your container? So if you have a fixed moles of solute in that solution and you have some given amount of solution that's there, any ideas for how you could change that concentration? Well, anything that causes this solution to expand or contract like temperature would end up having an effect on this concentration. So your molarity at room temperature may not be your molarity at 50 degrees Celsius or 100 degrees Celsius, because the solution will expand as the temperature increases that would increase the volume of solution, which would technically decrease your molarity. And so because molarity is dependent on temperature, there is a type of concentration that we use that is independent of temperature, and it is called molality. And it's symbolized by an italicized lowercase m. And when we say what the concentration of that solution is in molality, we simply say molal. So now, the definition is still moles of solute. That part is still good because the moles of solute, the amount of the substance, the mass of the substance, the number of molecules or ions will not change when the temperature changes unless there's a chemical reaction and we're ignoring that for now. So the moles of solute will still be okay, but instead of a volume, what could we use in the denominator that would be independent of temperature. Hopefully you said mass as well, and so we're going to use kilograms of solvent. And sometimes this is different from liters of solution. Even though for water at 25 degrees Celsius, even though one kilogram is one liter, this is only true for pure water. So if you have a liter of solution above with molarity, but to get that liter of solution, you didn't use a full liter of water, well then that's gonna give you a different value for molality. So we still have, in our example, we still have one mole of C5H8O4. But to make this solution, 
it only used 132 grams of water. So remember, again, now we're focused on the solvent rather than the whole solution. It does need to be kilograms, though, and to convert that to kilograms, to convert grams to kilograms, is the same way we converted milliliters to liters, which is to multiply by 1,000, which is really dividing the grams by 1,000. And when you work that out, you find that this is 7.57, .57 and the five sevens are repeating. And this would be molal with an italicized M, lowercase, as much as you can do to write it that way. And we would still label it with whatever that concentration is of, whatever the molecular compound is in the solution. So molality, the nice thing with molality is that it is independent of temperature. And this is also useful, it turns out, for something called colligative properties. Not all colligative properties, but a few. We'll describe these on a different day, but for now, think of these colligative properties as being freezing point and boiling point. That is not a comprehensive list, but it is the two colligative properties that molality is useful for. So again, molality is simply moles of solute over kilograms of solvent. There is one other kind of concentration that you might see sometimes. It comes up a lot in nursing and in allied health, and that concentration is called normality. For now, just think of it as being based on molarity, but with an extra factor. I don't believe, I don't think that's in your textbooks this year, but if you're interested in healthcare professions, that is another way of measuring and discussing concentration of solutions. Now, one of the concentrations that we can use, two of the concentrations really, are not exclusive to solutions. You could also use them for um, gases, you could use them for solid mixtures, and that's going to be percent and parts per million. And there's no reason to specifically use parts per million. You could also use parts per thousand, parts per billion, parts per quadrillion, whatever, okay? In fact, percent, we could also think of as being parts per 100, which is why these two types of concentrations, percent and PPM, are closely related because it's the same idea behind them. It's just how many of the things we're looking at that changes. So to find either of these, we really want the same units. We want the mass of solute per mass of solution. These are typically expressed in masses. So this is a percent M over M or W over W, okay, for weight, weight, or a weight percent. So mass of solute, mass of solution. So this could be grams over grams. This could be kilograms over kilograms. Sometimes, if we're kind of stuck, we do mass over volume for concentration, for these percents or PPM. And instead of mass of solution, we might use volume of solution. But we want that volume of solution to be very close to the mass. And so if our mass is in grams, then our volume would actually be in milliliters. If our mass is in kilograms, then our volume would actually be in liters. So again, with our C5H8O4, 
The molar mass of that happens to be 132.13 grams. And if we put that over the amount of solution that we have, 150 milliliters, notice now that the grams and the milliliters match. So this is the starting point for either one of these concentrations. What's the mass? What's the grams per milliliter? What's the grams per gram? What's the kilograms per kilogram? You could certainly now go to any SI prefixes you wanted to. So a thousand times bigger than milliliters would be liters, but that would also make this gra kilograms into kilograms. So we could do kilograms per liter, grams per milliliter. We could go smaller, and if we say milligrams, well, that's going to be per microliter. If we say micrograms, well, that's going to be per nanoliter. So notice that when we have the volumes, the volume prefixes are a thousand times smaller than the mass prefixes, okay? From here, from this starting point, to get to a percent, we just multiply by 100%. And so in percentage concentration, rounded a good bit, this would be 88% in terms of concentration. That's very high when we think about percent concentration. To get to parts per million, we would multiply by a million or 10 to the sixth. That would make this 8.8 .8 times 10 to the fifth parts per million. Notice this is a pretty large number because parts per million are generally going to be used for very small concentrations. Percentages can be used for very large concentrations. And again, these PPM and percents are really based off of masses of solute and solution or mass of solute and volume of solution rather than anything going on with moles. So these will change based off of the identity of the compound you put into the solution. So this solution, one mole of this glutaric acid, has this percentage in this PPM. But if we said we had one mole of something like sodium hydroxide, that's going to be 40 grams. And if we put that into the same volume of solution, then our percentage is going to be lower because 40 is less than 132. And when we find the percent, that's 26.7% and 2.67 times 10 to the fifth parts per million. So notice the percentage here is lower, the parts per million is lower, but the reason why is because the mass is lower. If we were looking for molarity of either of these solutions. Again, just like early on, earlier on when we had one mole of the glutaric acid over 150 milliliters, that was 6.667 molar. If we have one mole of sodium hydroxide in the same volume of solution, that's going to give us the same concentration because it's still one mole. So molarity, Molality, these are dependent on moles. They're only dependent on the number of molecules or particles in the solution, whereas expressions of concentration like percent and parts per million are dependent on the mass of the solute. So it's tricky sometimes when you look at these and you're trying to compare them between different compounds. Um, just kind of keep that in mind. Sometimes these will come up. Sometimes these are useful units, useful ways of expressing concentration, which is why on the one worksheet, which is coming up next uh, in two weeks, actually, um, this is the worksheet for the third week of this unit. If you want to get started on it now, I am asking you to calculate molarity, molality, PPM, and percent, not normality, of these solutions. And we just did 1A in this video as an example.
So if you're looking for more practice right now with these, I would suggest that you look at that first question on that worksheet and that maybe you even think about numbers two and number three, okay? Please uh, jump into the discussion, ask any questions, share your thoughts.